Welcome to this lesson on German pronouns. I'm Alexandra and I'll be your teacher today. Pronouns are words like I, you, he, him, she, her, and it that we use in place of people or objects names. Learning the pronouns in German can be as simple if you take the right approach, but you'll need to learn more about four aspects of the language before you can use the pronouns correctly. I know what you're thinking. Oh no, here we go again with more interwoven German grammar. When you're bombarded with so many intimidating concepts at once, it's tempting to throw in the towel. But if you break down the grammar into manageable tidbits, you might discover that German grammar is easier than English. That's because German pretty much always follows a system of logical rules that make sense once you learn them. English, in contrast, has grammar with tons of exceptions that follow no rhyme and no reason. So what is the deal with German pronouns? Unfortunately, you can't just learn the German pronouns and then start tossing them into sentences. Well, you could try to speak German this way, but you'd have a challenging time choosing the correct pronoun form. A few factors come into the picture when you're faced with choosing which German pronoun to use. Once you become familiar with German, you'll automatically choose the correct forms. Until then, ask the following questions as a guide to selecting the correct pronoun. First is the person. Which subject are you replacing with a pronoun? I, you, he, she, it, us. Next is the case. Is the pronoun the subject, direct object, indirect object, or possessive object? German has grammar uses a case system that affects which pronoun you'll need. Next is the gender. What is the gender of the noun following the pronoun? German nouns have one of three genders, which determines the ending of your pronoun. Finally, the number. Is the pronoun singular or plural? In some cases, but not all, the feminine and plural are the same or similar. Now that you know how to select a pronoun, let's look at the pronouns themselves. Remember, you shouldn't expect to remember every detail the first time you learn it. Repetition and regular exposure to the German language will help these concepts come together over time. What are the German pronouns? First, let's look at personal pronouns, the simplest and most used pronouns. Personal pronouns replace proper names of people. Some examples in English include I, you, he, she, it, they, us, we, etc. Below is a complete chart that you can use as a reference while you learn and practice German pronouns. The table includes the personal pronouns and forms according to person, case, and number. Later, you'll learn how gender impacts the pronoun's ending. In the first column, you can see personal pronouns in English. The next column shows the nominative case, then the accusative case, dative case, and genitive case. You can find this table on the website and download it to use as a reference later. You probably noticed that there are way too many ways to say you, and the ear is popping up all over the place. In German, you'll frequently use the informal version of you, du, to speak with friends, colleagues, and many strangers or acquaintances your age. The formal form in business and socially formal settings. I recommend reviewing the German case system before moving ahead. However, to make sense of all these different pronouns, let's begin by learning how the German cases affect your pronoun choices. Okay, so why is the German case system butting in on personal pronoun business? I know the German case system is like an unwanted party guest that keeps returning to all your gatherings. 
but German grammar does require you to become comfortable identifying the subjects, direct objects, and indirect objects of sentences. Luckily, you can easily learn how to identify these sentence elements and assign the proper pronoun. And yes, it gets easier with practice. The nominative case and personal pronouns. The subject of your sentence takes the nominative case pronoun. The subject is the primary noun initiating the action in your sentence. For example, I gave it to her. Ich habe es ihr gegeben. Here I and ich are the sentence subjects and take the nominative case pronoun in German. If you think about the pronouns in English, you won't use me or my for a sentence subject. The only difference is that you may know actively be aware that you're using this grammar because the language comes so naturally to you. The accusative case and personal pronouns. The direct object in your sentence takes an accusative case pronoun like it or them. The direct object is typically a thing that receives the subject's action. Like in the last sentence. I gave it to her. I was the subject, and here it, ich habe es ihr gegeben, es, is the place of whatever object the subject is giving. But of course, you can use other accusative pronouns in this way as well. The dative case and personal pronouns. The indirect object in your sentence uses dative case pronouns. Indirect objects are receiving an action from the subject and its direct object. In English, you would use a pronoun like me, her, or him. Like, I gave it to her. Ich habe es ihr gegeben. Here, the indirect object, her, is receiving the direct object, it, from the subject, I. You can replace dative case indirect objects with a corresponding dative pronoun from the table. Now it's time to start putting those personal pronouns into action. Let's look at some examples of personal pronouns and their roles in sentences. The different pronoun types are highlighted for, in orange for clarity on the website. First, let's look at subject pronouns in the nominative case. Subject pronouns, the nominative case. Below are examples of subject pronouns that take the nominative case. Read along beside me if you like. In example one, you forgot, du hast vergessen. You and du are subject pronouns in the nominative case. Similarly, we already know Wir wissen schon. It is late. Es ist spät. I am happy. Ich bin glücklich. She works early. Sie arbeitet früh. He is young. Er ist jung. Sie haben Zeit. They have time. Now, let's look at some direct object pronouns in the accusative case. Example one. You forgot us. Du hast uns vergessen. Example two. We already know him. Wir kennen ihn schon. I love you. Ich liebe dich. He likes them. Er mag sie. You taught her. Du hast sie gelehrt. I hear it now. Ich höre es jetzt. She sees me. Sie sieht mich. Indirect object pronouns. Next, let's examine sentences with three nouns where one pronoun is an indirect object. First, you, subject, forgot to give us, indirect object, the book, direct object. Du hast vergessen, uns, 
das Buch zu geben. We subject gave her, indirect object, the message, direct object. Wir haben ihr die Nachricht gegeben. I subject bought him, indirect object, an ice cream, direct object. Ich habe ihm ein Eis gekauft. We subject are baking them, indirect object, a cake, direct object. Wir backen ihnen einen Kuchen. She subject made you, indirect object, a gift, direct object. Sie hat dir ein Geschenk gemacht. He's subject, telling you guys, indirect object, something, direct object, important. Er erzählt euch etwas Wichtiges. You subject, gave me, indirect object, a ticket, direct object. Du hast mir ein Ticket gegeben. The other. German pronouns. Besides personal pronouns, German also has possessive, reflexive, indefinite, and demonstrative pronouns. These terms are simply fancy names for everyday words you use all the time. Let's look at possessive pronouns next. German possessive pronouns. You use possessive pronouns to talk about something that belongs to someone else. Sometimes you'll need to attach an ending to your German possessive pronouns, depending on the gender in case of the following noun. Getting the endings correct for German possessive pronouns will require some background knowledge of adjective endings and the German case system. That's why I recommend mastering the previous sections before moving on to grammar topics like possessive pronouns that are increasingly complex. So let's dive in. Pro pronoun mine, my, and the nominative, accusative, and dative. Let's have a look at the masculine. Mine is nominative, meinen, accusative, meinem, dative, feminine, meine, accusative, meine, dative, meine, neuter, mine, Mine, meinem. Plural, meine, meine, meinen. If you focus on the endings, you might start to notice a pattern. And it sure is a lot of different ways that you can say my. Overall, there are five options. No ending, E ending, ER ending, EN ending, or EM ending. Notice that the masculine and neuter endings are the same. The feminine and plural endings are also the same, meaning you really only need to remember the first two columns. Learning German Possessive Pronouns The same endings apply to other possessive pronouns in German. For example, my is mine, yours, dein. Yours formal, io. Yours plural, oio. Hers, io. His, sein. Its, sein. Are, unser. Their, ear. Let's look at a few examples to help clarify how possessive pronouns work. Let's look at a few examples of German possessive pronouns. Example one. I put my book on the table. Ich habe mein Buch auf den Tisch gelegt. Here my book is the accusative direct object. The book takes the neuter gender in German and doesn't require an ending. Example two. I put the book on my table. Ich habe das Buch auf meinen Tisch gelegt. 
Here my table is also accusative, but the table is a masculine noun in German, so you need to assign an en ending. Finally, example three, his book and her lamp are on our table. Sein Buch und ihre Lampe liegen auf unserem Tisch. Here you have a neuter noun book and a feminine noun lamp in the accusative case. The phrase on our table is dative and because we have the masculine noun table, you use an EM ending. German reflexive pronouns. Reflexive pronouns are words like myself, yourself, himself, herself, and ourselves. Although German uses reflexive pronouns in sentences where English doesn't, the concept behind how they work is similar. Reflexive pronouns only pop up in the accusative and dative cases. Let's look at them right now. Myself, an accusative, mich, and dative, mio. Yourself formal, sich, and dative, sich. Yourself informal, dish, and dative, dio. Yourself plural, an accusative, oish, and dative, oish. Himself and herself and itself are all the same. They're all zish in accusative and dative. Ourselves is uns in accusative and dative. Themselves is zish in accusative and dative. Compared to English, German has more verbs that require reflexive pronouns. Unfortunately, you'll have to memorize which verbs are reflexive. Through exposure to the language, you'll learn when to use reflexive pronouns correctly. Now let's look at some of the most common reflexive verbs in the German accusative case. The reflexive verb sich anziehen. It means to get dressed. Sich ausziehen means to get undressed. Sich baden to bathe oneself. Sich befinden, to be located. Sich beschweren, to complain about. Sich duschen, to shower. Sich freuen, to be glad. Sich fühlen, to feel. Sich informieren, to inform oneself. Sich interessieren, to be interested in. Sich kämen, to comb. Sich legen, to lie down. Sich rasieren, to shave. Sich setzen, to sit. Sich stellen, to stand. Sich treffen, to meet. Sich verabschieden, to say goodbye. Sich verletzen, to injure oneself. Sich vorstellen, to introduce, introduce oneself. Sich waschen, to wash oneself. Remember, these are all in the accusative case. Now, let's look at the accusative reflexive verbs and pronouns in action. Example one, I'm getting dressed. Ich ziehe mich an. You don't say that you're dressing yourself in English. But like I mentioned before, many German verbs are reflexive when they wouldn't be in English. This is one example. Example two, you are shaving. Du rasierst dich. Translated, the German sentence would mean, I'm shaving myself. Another example where German uses it and English doesn't. Example three, she is glad. Sie freut sich. Number four, we're saying goodbye. Wir verabschieden uns. Number five, you guys complain about everything. Ihr beschwert euch über alles. Number six, I'm sitting down. Ich setze mich. Number seven, 
he's informing himself. Er informiert sich. The most common reflexive verbs in the German dative case. There are far fewer reflexive verbs beginner speakers need to worry about in the dative reflexive. Nevertheless, here are a few you may frequently use during the start of your language studies. Sich etwas bürsten, to brush something. Sich etwas kämen, to comb something. Sich etwas anziehen, to put something on. Sich etwas ausziehen, to take something off. Sich etwas putzen, to clean something. Sich wehtun, to hurt oneself. Most of the data reflexive verbs include direct objects, making the previous reflexive pronoun a dative and direct object. In other words, some of these can be accusative and dative. For example, I brush, ich brüste mich. But if you want to add what you're br brushing, I brush my hair, ich brüste mir die Haare. In this case, mich becomes mir because it becomes dative and the hair becomes the accusative. In getting dressed, ich zieh mich an, you're putting on the pants, adding a direct object, du ziehst dir die Hose an. Similarly, if the reflexive pronoun above takes the dative form, it can be because a direct object, the pants, joined the sentence. We hurt ourselves, wir haben uns wehgetan. This one is always in the dative. German demonstrative pronouns. Words like this, that, those, and these are demonstrative pronouns that function similarly in German and English. There's good news and there's bad news. First, I'll share the good news. The stem word for all four of the English demonstrative pronouns is a single pronoun, dies. But now the not so fantastic news. Like many other aspects of German, the ending of dies depends on the pronouns case, gender, and number. Let's have a look at the table here. The demonstrative pronoun dies, and the masculine nominative gets an er ending. In the accusative, an en ending. In the dative, em ending. In the feminine, dies plus nominative. Nominative is an E ending, accusative has an E ending, and dative has an ER ending. In neuter, nominative, dieses, in accusative, dieses, and dative, diesem. And the plural looks similar to the feminine, except in the dative there's an EN ending. It might seem like a lot to remember, but repetition is the key to it all sinking in. The first example, give me those apples. Gib mir diese Äpfel. Here those is represented by a plural, accusative, demonstrative pronoun ending E. Another example, we're moving this table. Wir verschieben diesen Tisch. In this example, this is represented by a masculine, accusative, demonstrative pronoun, so the ending en. German indefinite pronouns. Anybody, somebody, and nobody are examples of indefinite pronouns. In German, these pronouns are useful when there is no specified noun. For example, everyone or anyone can be translated into jeda, jeden, or jedem, depending on the nominative, accusative, or dative case. Similarly, nobody is niemand, niemanden, or niemandem. Nothing is nichts, someone is jemand, jemanden, or jemandem. Something is etwas. The indefinite pronouns nicht and etwas don't receive endings, but
but the other pronouns get endings according to the case, gender, and number. Let's look at the first example. Does someone know him? Kent in Yemen? The next example. Someone knows him. Yemen Kent in. As a sentence and a question, this example uses the nominative case. Finally, we invited nobody. Wir haben niemanden eingeladen. Here the indefinite pronoun is a direct object and takes an accusative en ending. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on German pronouns. You can see there's a lot more to German pronouns than what meets the eye. However, if you tackle each concept step by step, you can learn the pronouns in German by building a foundation that expands over time. So instead of learning everything about German pronouns in a single sitting, return to the topic repeatedly and break it down into shorter sessions. The more familiar you become with German case systems and adjective endings, the more you'll understand pronouns each time you return to the topic. In the meantime, why not practice your speaking skills with my basic pronunciation guide?